Welcome to Podcasts, recorded live at the Center for Spiritual Living in Portland, Oregon. We have many programs, classes, and workshops developed just for our online audience. To find out more, go to our website at cslportland.org and look under the Online tab. Our mission is to open hearts, ignite minds, and make a difference. If you'd like to support our center and its video podcast, you can donate online at cslportland.org slash donate. Allow us to become part of your extended spiritual community. Wherever you are on your spiritual journey, you are most welcome at the Center for Spiritual Living. Let's all stand together and sing our opening song together. It is thank you for this day. So as our hearts open up today for our wonderful service, we say thank you. Oh, thank you. We say thank you. Oh, thank you. Let's sing together, y'all. Thank you for this day, Spirit. Thank you for this day. This healing, this healing, this healing day, this healing, this healing, this healing day. Thank you for my friends, my friends, spirit. Thank you for my friends. Oh, thank you for my friends. For my friends, spirit. Thank you for my wonderful, my wonderful. Welcome to the Portland Center for Spiritual Living and our virtual community online. We are a science of mind community that teaches spiritual principles to transform your life and make the world a better place. Wherever you are on your spiritual journey, you are welcome here. All we ask is that you stay open to the possibility of changing your entire life simply by changing your mind. My name is Nancy Ashley, licensed practitioner here, and it is my honor to welcome you. If you're new to the center, anybody new here today? First time? Oh, yes, welcome. So there are, 
welcome packets uh, right behind you. I don't know if you got one yet or not, um, but this gives us gives you all the information about us, uh, who we are, how we might serve you, what we believe, and um, this is yours to take home. And um, there's a Science of Mind magazine to get you started. So if you're in our global community, you can find all the same information at our website, cslportland.org, and uh, the About Us tab, and you'll find all the information there about who we are, what we stand for, and how we might serve you. On our website, you can also sign up for um, our weekly emails that are really helpful, give everything you need to know, and Zoom links and all. Um, and if you can register for classes there, and uh, you'll get a free gift on your birthday. So we have a number of announcements, but we're going to keep them kind of short mine short today. Um, so we have licensed practitioner uh, Kathy Batten in the sanctuary here and on our virtual community. We have um, licensed practitioner Andy Turin holding high watch, which is uh, holding uh, everyone in a sacred container of consciousness. So our special music today is, of course, our wonderful LaRonda Steele and the Friends Band. <laughs> and our message today is from our very own uh, Reverend Christine. And, and uh, she will be speaking on the genius of and. Now, I think we've heard about either or, you know, and, and exploring some of that. So today we get into the and, living and in the end. So flowers are courtesy of Kat Jacobs, thank you. And um, there are a couple of things that I need to just share. Um, on November 19th, we will be having two special events. Uh, at 12.30, right after the service, we will be doing um, our uh, potluck, what do we call it, harvest potluck. And um, there's a sign-up sheet in the back. This is also Bring a Friend Sunday. So uh, please sign up if you're bringing someone so we know how many people we're serving. And also if you um, will be bringing a side dish. So we will be providing, I believe, turkey and ham. And um, then all of us will bring all the, the accoutrements. So... Um, while that's going on downstairs, there will also be a, um, our second annual silent auction going on upstairs. And this is um, for you to bid on one-of-a-kind gifts for you or your loved ones, uh, donations of new or like new items, event tickets, and much more are needed, so please sign up at the back table or contact Nadine Muller for more information. And I am now calling Nadine up for something different. Thank you. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Okay, you guys all know me. I'm Nadine Muller, and I'm a licensed practitioner and the board president here at PCSL. And I'd like to take a few minutes to talk about our annual stewardship program, Partners in Prosperity. So let me first begin by saying thank you. Thank you, thank you to every single individual who has ever given anything to support PCSL. Your generous support is what keeps our center vital, growing in service, and able to translate our vision into a reality. Donations large and small help us support not only our current programs, but lay the groundwork and foundations for us to grow, flourish, and reach many more in our community. Intentional giving is the fundamental building block of our budget, determining the programs and opportunities we're able to offer over the next year. And when you commit to giving, you enter into relationship with our community and its offerings. Our program is called Partners in Prosperity because we're partnering with spirit, with God, and with the Portland Center for Spiritual Living for your own prosperity while supporting this ministry. 
The Partners in Prosperity program is also about the stewardship of our center as a thriving nonprofit business. And this year we have some added expenses, as you all know. <laughs> um, we're in the midst of a new minister search. And in addition, part of our job as responsible stewards is the maintenance of our greatest financial asset, which is this very building we're in. We're blessed to have this wonderful space and to have equity in the building. Our roof has reached its life expectancy and we're in contract for a new roof. We're actually number six on the queue, so I'm waiting when we're number three, they'll give us a date, so hopefully it'll be soon. And we have met these financial obligations. We were able to budget for the new minister search, and we dipped into our reserve funds to cover the cost of the new roof. As a result, our savings aren't as strong as they were before the onset of COVID-19. So in the next five weeks, we request that you express your intentions regarding what you intend to contribute to the center in 2024. This will enable us to create a reasonable budget for next year. It's also a requirement by our bank who holds the mortgage on this building. So to this end, you'll find intentional giving cards in the, backs, in the seat backs and in your handouts. And for our beloved virtual community, Pledges can be made on our website, www.cslportland.org backslash pledge. The card, the pledge card, also serves as a personal commitment to your spiritual growth, and it invites greater abundance into your life. There is an elevation, an expansion, and the elevation comes from the intention not to just give a gift in response to what you have received today and every Sunday, and the weeks in between, but as an investment in the future of our ministry and an expectation of all the people that we can reach, teach, and heal in the coming year. So we did something a little different this year. We wanted to focus on the spiritual intention of your gracious giving. Since finances are counted using numerals, we did some research on the metaphysical and spiritual meaning behind one number in particular which is the number 18. In some faiths, the number 18 means life, with a capital L. The number 18 has a deep spiritual and metaphysical meaning. Depending on your source, the meaning of the number 18 is infinite potential, transformation, spiritual awakening, expanded consciousness, new beginnings, abundance, success, and again, life, with a capital L. The connection of the number 18 to PCSL is most apparent when we speak our benediction at the end of service. Every week we state with conviction, something wonderful is flowing through me right now. It is this thing called life. Life is in my mind, life is in my body, and life is in my affairs. I think it, I believe it, I accept it just the way it is. Thank you, life. So as we move into Prosperity Month, I'd like to offer an idea that will empower our intentions and purpose while focusing particular meaning to our gracious giving. And again, you can donate what you're most comfortable with. This is an idea. So let's all make use of the spiritual strength and power of the number 18 by giving in denominations of 18 or increasing our gifts by denominations of 18 thereby setting and demonstrating the intention of infinite potential, abundance, success, expanded consciousness, and life. We will be mailing out intentional giving cards this week, and they'll also be available in your programs next week. Those in our beloved virtual community can again make their pledge on our website at www.cslportland.org backslash pledge. And as you know, because the Portland Center for Spiritual Living is not just an organization or an entity, but an intentional community of faith, you are contributing to the community that will be there to inspire, empower, and comfort you, as well as others in the coming year. And as you give, expect to receive. So if you have any questions about the program, our finances, or pledging in general, please ask me or any member of the board and when you've completed filling out the card, you can put it in the offering basket, or again, you can give it to a member of the board. 
So thank you so much for your support. Thank you, Nadine. So there are a couple of um, other announcements just in terms of um, there is a workshop that's going to be presented by Reverend Christine Green, Moving from Scarcity to Prosperity, which will be a 90-minute workshop in person and virtual um, on Sunday, November 26th. So you'll hear more about that um, in coming days. I want to just also point out in our uh, program today, there is a special um, flyer for Wednesday's meditation, which will be virtual and in person here. And this is by licensed practitioner Sean uh, Larkin and LaRonda Steele. And I'm understanding, if I say it right, Sawain is the, um, it is the uh, handpan meditation. And I believe that that is, we know what Halloween is the evening before, and now this November 1st is the uh, special day, which some of us call um, All Saints Day or something like that. Um, but this is in the um, Celtic tradition. And of course, we still have, um, if you look through your program, you'll see there's also a flyer there for transcendence. And we invite anybody that um, might be appropriate for that. So sit back and relax because we know that somewhere between the music, the meditation, and the message is exactly what your heart came to receive. So I'll take a big breath. Relax, get ready for our meditation time.
But there is only love, and there are so many other qualities of spirit of God that are also present everywhere, in, through, and as every aspect of the universe. We know there is love, wisdom, wholeness, joy, abundance, peace, that each of these qualities is everywhere present throughout the universe, in, through, and as everything. And that means it is all of these qualities are in each one of us that I am an individualized, unique expression of that oneness, that love is in me, that abundance is in me, and wisdom, peace. And I know as this is true for me, it's true for every person in the sound of my voice, that we are all individualized, unique expressions of this amazing spiritual essence that I call God or spirit or divine intelligence. It doesn't matter what we call it, but we know that there is only this one everywhere energy present throughout the universe. And so as we are co-creating our amazing lives, I know that we are able to claim and affirm love throughout all of humanity, that we are all one, that love is special to us for our friends and family, but it goes out to everyone. We are all one in the body of God. And I know that abundance is part of my life and the life of each one of us here. And that includes financial abundance, friendship abundance, family abundance, that all of us have an abundance of opportunity, of ways that we can serve and love and be. And so just giving thanks for knowing that love and abundance are fully present in, through, and as each one of us awaiting our recognition and knowing that we can go forth to do more and more with these qualities. And so I give thanks for knowing this truth and I release my word into the action and activity of the law, knowing that it's already done based on our faith, our beliefs. It is done unto us as we believe and we know that the law says yes. And so I just release this, I let it be, and together we say, and so it is. And as we go into the silence, I just invite us to focus on how we might be more and more loving in our lives, sharing our abundance, being that presence of spirit in our world. Welcome, thank you so much for being here today and thank you to those of you in our virtual community for joining us, is that together we are here together to form community, to be in that one love, in that one presence, in that one power. And so many exciting things happening here. Please join us on Wednesday, whether you can come in person for our Wednesday meditation or online. Please join us for this powerful opportunity to be in community and to receive this a beautiful gift that Sean and LaRonda are sharing. Um, that, that is the first thing I wanted to say. And we have so much going on in, in November. If money is an issue, this is the month to handle it. When, when in prosperity and partnership, it's we have an opportunity to give to something greater than, than us. That as we give with love, it comes back multiplied. And so we have this opportunity in the month of November and the brilliance of identifying the number 18, which represents life. Because the acronym for life is love in full expression. Will you say that with me? Love, love in full, full expression. expression. So when we think of that one life, when we think of that one presence, it's really love in full expression. That's what life is. That's what spirit is. So 
that to focus on that for an entire month, to focus on gratitude and abundance, we have a, uh, we're gonna be rocking the house. Rocking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, oh, and in the midst of that, we are here. It is so difficult to find words for what is going on in the world yes. right now. Yes. That, uh, a hurricane in Mexico, uh, the senseless violence in Lewiston, Maine, and the continued war in Israel and Gaza and Ukraine and all the places of conflict around the world. There's no words, but we know, we know a word, and it is this thing called life. It is this thing called love, and we stand in that truth. And the power we have is to come together in community and to know that, that when we come together, we are empowering ourselves, we're empowering the world, and we're sending out a vibration of good. So that's the power with, of being here. There is no better place than to be here right now and no better time than to support this community to, to that we have a place to come, that we have a place to, to heal and to pray. And here's what Ernest says. He says, let us face the future without fear. Let us pray for peace and make our hearts, our intellect, and our soul be ready to receive and embrace it even before it comes. Let us in the stillness of our own soul go back to that presence which is peace and proclaim the peace which is the power at the heart of God. Peace is the power at the heart of God. And I love that. Let us pray for peace and know peace in our hearts and embrace it before it comes. Let's not look at the pictures of the news and see that, but let us send peace. Let us know wholeness. Let us know that the communities are getting what they need. Let us see the soldiers laying down their weapons. Let us see a new picture, a new vision. Our work is to know the highest good regardless of the circumstance. We are here together to know divine wisdom, love, tolerance, and peace. And we declare these qualities even in the appearances of the world. So let's just take a breath. So thank you for your willingness to be here, your willingness to be in community, your willingness to hold a higher vision. Let's just take another breath. So our theme this month is awareness, uh, is to expand our awareness of paradox. And paradox is a natural part of life. It's when there is an apparent contradiction that contains truth. And the more we embrace this truth, the more we find solutions to the problems we are facing, not only in our individual lives, but our communities and the world. The, the, Great paradox is the birth of Jesus. Born in a, a manger, it's the symbology of that a spiritual life, that divine power enters a spiritual life through very humble beginnings. And then we have the story of Buddha, who is before he became enlightened and became Buddha, he was Siddhartha. And he was born into opulence. And he was protected by his father from the unpleasant sights of life, such as aging, sickness, and death. But young Siddhartha managed to sneak out of his perfect world and to only to collide with the imperfection of seeing he's, he saw an old man and a funeral procession and it shattered his consciousness wide open. The paradox is that Buddha needed absolute wealth to understand that no amount of material security could preserve him from the human fate of suffering. And from that collision of opposites, 
he began his search for truth and how blessed we are with the gift that he brought to us. So spirituality is full of paradox. We talk about the masculine and the feminine energy, consciousness and matter, living in the world but not of the world, the inner and outer landscape. We know that these seeming, seem to be opposites, but they're two sides of the same coin. There's a mixture, and there's a mixture in the two into a third option, and that's the and. And that, that's represented by a small amount of darkness in the light and a small amount of light in the darkness. And so spirituality has been calling us to find this third way and let go of our, our either or thinking and embrace the possibility of the and and to step into something more. So Ernest says, it's a popular belief that those who practice the science are a class of people who declare that everything is perfect, when as a matter of fact, everything is an objective experience of the race. It's not perfect, and it's far from being perfect. So this popular idea of the practice of spiritual science is a misconception. A religious scientist is not one who assures themselves that wrong is right, that evil is good, that limitation is freedom, that bondage is liberty. They do not claim that our objective experience is an illusion, but they make this claim behind the phenomenon of human and material existence, behind the slow and persistent processes of evolution. We know behind all of that, there is one mind, one power, one presence. This is what a religious scientist knows. We claim that this mind is perfect and we have access to this mind. Not that the conditions are necessarily perfect, but we know there's a one mind that is perfect. There's a power and a presence behind all that's perfect, that's divine. And so Ernest understood that we could see from these two perspectives simultaneously and that I, our ideas must be held and, and known simultaneously in order for us to step up and create a world that works for everyone. So when we can let go of certainty, which is difficult, we have times when that's difficult, <laughs> But when we can release our attachment to old paradigms, then we can find a new way. When we look at the world from a place of possibility and infinite potential, we can see the world through a different lens. Now, in spite of what we hear on the news every day, there are hundreds of good news stories. Don't you crave good news stories? Yeah. So I'm going to share some good news stories. And that these are, these are stories that happened that looked at another way of bringing a result. Like, not at the conditions, but here's another way of, of bringing a result. So in Louisiana, a former NFL player, Warwick Dunn, created a charity. And he collaborated with Habitat for Humanity and a local Catholic charity. And together, they raised money, they raised the funds to establish 217 homes for families and individuals. That they looked not at the conditions in the world. They said, what can we do beyond the conditions in the world? They created these homes. They furnished them. They stocked them with foods. They gave the owner the keys. And then the owner went in. And on the kitchen table was the mortgage papers that they signed. Wow. So it's so powerful, wow. so powerful. And then in Atlanta, a debtor organization brought $10 million worth of student loans. So what this organization does is they go out and buy these loans for pennies on the dollar. And that they cleared the student loans for 3,000 students at Morehouse College. So 3,000 students, yes, 
were, were, ha were released from their loans because somebody had a better idea. Somebody had a better idea. Let's look at it this way. Let's look at the potential and the possibility. And then the last one is so fun. This New Jersey man was laid off from his job. And so he went around and he wanted to do something. He wanted to serve. So he ran, went around and asked people, I want to mow your lawn. Can I mow your lawn? I want to mow your lawn. He even put a patent on that name, I want to mow your lawn. <laughs> he now has 500 volunteers in 46 states of similar organizations that go out and mow, and it's not limited to mowing a lawn, but, but leaf removal, snow removal, ice removal, and now he's training people to do lawn projects, to build sidewalks, to build gardens. He's training them to do that. And he partnered with the companies that make the, the equipment for lawns. The, the tractors, the tools, and the companies are providing him with the tools for his volunteers. So he had another idea. He had another idea. He had an and. It's not just this, but and. There's another possibility. All of these people looked outside the box. They looked beyond the conditions to see something greater in the world. When we do that, we open to that infinite mind, that one mind, that one life. We are never going to see that, that phrase again, the one life, the same, because we are embracing it as love in full expression. That life is love. God is love. Love in full expression is that life. And Carolyn Mace, I love her book, Defy, Defy Gravity, Defying Gravity. She says, you know, we live in a turbulent world. And societies have always known problems. But the problems we have today are much bigger and more complex than anything we faced before, right? We cannot talk our way out of our crisis. We cannot solve our financial, political, environmental problems with paper legislation. She says, the problems facing humanity have become unreasonable. They're unreasonable. A global nuclear crisis is an unreasonable crisis. A global climate meltdown is an unreasonable crisis that we cannot buy our way out of. But she says, we, it's up to us to shift to another perception to another realm beyond conventional reason. We must learn to think as the mystics did. We must learn to defy gravity. So what did the mystics do? They knew something beyond what was in front of us, beyond matter. They knew the power of consciousness. And so she says what this requires is developing our intellectual and creative resources as well as our capacity to perceive the world through the power of the soul. The power of the soul, that we are, we are spiritual beings having a physical experience, having a human experience. The power of the soul is what we know and what brings us and and motivates us and inspires us to move forward. When we look at life that way, anything is possible, right? Just like those three examples, anything can be possible. But we have to step out of the box. We have to be willing to look out of the, the way it was before or the way it looks and not be attached to that, but to see something new. And she says, what is possible in this way, what's possible in the physical world of reason and logic becomes completely possible in the world of grace and the world of mystical law and the world of prayer and divine companionship. And so for us, that's why we're, we do this work. 
That's why we're here to do this work, is that every time we can shift our awareness, that we are shifting the consciousness. We're shifting the frequency and the vibration. That the work we do in, in science of mind is so powerful because together with all of our teaching around the world is that we are embracing something more than what we see in front of us. Every time we forgive someone, every time we let go of an attachment, every time we remove a block or transcend an emotional conflict, we are contributing to the consciousness of the planet. Every time we choose love instead of hate, peace instead of conflict, unity instead of exclusion, harmony instead of judgment, we contribute the, to the consciousness of the planet. God is calling right now. <laughs> she says, yes, that's the truth, yes. I already know, you don't have to answer it, I already know. So, every time we reach out to help another, we send love to those who are suffering, we check in on a neighbor, we say a prayer for another, we visualize peace instead of unrest, we are contributing to the consciousness of the planet. Our awareness, our willingness, we are contributing to the consciousness of the planet. We don't need to know how things will change. We just need to be willing to know they can, right? We just need to be no willing to know that they can. And then I came across this quote from Thich, Thich Nhat Hanh, mystic teacher, author, writer. When conditions are sufficient, there is manifestation. Think about that. When conditions are sufficient, there is manifestation. It's just the opposite of what we do in the world, right? Because we go after the condition. I, want, I, need, I need to make some money, so I'm going to go do this. And so we go and do all of our things to go after that. But it all starts inside. When the conditions are sufficient, when my awareness is present, when I'm in alignment with my good, when I am in alignment with love, there is manifestation. And uh, Master Teacher Jesus said the same thing. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, and all these things shall be added unto you. Seek first the kingdom of love. Seek first the kingdom of the eternality of God, the wisdom of God. Seek that first. It's, all, it's an inside job. It's all an inside job. Now, it's, that's the good news and the bad news, right? Because we'd rather have it be out there sometimes, right? It's like, let somebody else do it or have it be out there. But it all starts in here. What is ours to do is to nurture the seed of possibility, to nurture the seed of love the seed of potential, that the mind is the fertile soil. And when we put in the seeds of good, we can nurture that and grow something wonderful. When we look at the world from a place of love and possibility, we open the door and we step into the flow, into the flow. Years ago, Eric Butterworth created a little pamphlet um, called The Golden Key. And The Golden Key said, Whenever you are dealing with something, take your attention off the problem and put it on God instead. And he's saying the same thing. Take your attention off the conditions in the world and put it on spirit. Put it on the one mind. Put it on the one life. Put it on the one love. Put it on the one source. And there's a magical thing that happens because we're focused there. We're raising our vibration. And suddenly, we have the answer for what we need over here when we least expect it. Because it's not on our timeline. Did I forget to say that? It's not on our timeline. We have to trust the process. So three quick steps to contributing to the consciousness. Is the first is to let go. 
to let go, let go of attachment, let go of resentment, let go of the need to fix, let go of, the, of having to know, let go of attachment. Be, be in the moment, be present. The second is to forgive. That we look around the world and see the conflict around the world and say, isn't that terrible? Isn't that sad? But how many of us have conflict inside where we have an upset with a neighbor or we're not talking to a family member or we have an upset at work, that there's something going on? That to forgive has great power. Carolyn May says, forgiveness has nothing to do with the individuals who harmed you. It is the act of accepting that there's a greater map of life through which many rivers and events and relationships are all interconnected. <coughs> forgiveness is your, re oh, God's calling again. Wow. <laughs> this is a powerful day. This is a very powerful day. And it was about, she called right about forgiveness, right? <laughs> forgiveness is the release from the hell of wanting to know what cannot be known and from wanting to see others suffer because they have hurt you. And it's like, there's no peace in that. There's no peace in that. And the third is be open to possibilities. Be open to the possibilities. Look not at the appearances, but the possibilities. When you look at, well, I invite you not to look at the pictures of the news, but if you have to, Look at the possibility of what could be, the possibility of the, the food trucks getting through, of people having what they need, of medical supplies, of, of, the, of the soldiers laying down their weapons. When you look outside, know that there's a divine idea of mind that is bigger than any situation that we're confronting right now. Visualize a world that works for everyone, that does not deny health care, food, jobs, freedom, but a world that works for all of us. I love these words from John Lennon's song. Imagine there's no countries. It isn't hard to do. Nothing to kill or die for. And no religion, too. Imagine all the people living life in peace. You may say I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. I hope someday you'll join us and the world will be as one. Let's pray. Let's breathe. Take a breath. So we breathe that breath of life, knowing that, that there is an eternal oneness, an eternal life, an eternal love, an eternal source of good that moves in and through and as us this day. And we know this thing called life is moving through not only us in this room, not only those in our virtual com community, but through all of the planet, for the humanity everywhere, this life is moving through. And that we stand today holding a vision of peace, holding a vision of oneness, holding a vision of love for not just us, not just here, not just our vi virtual community, but around the planet. We hold this to be true. We know that any place there is, is suffering, we know love. Any place that there is discord, we know peace. Any place where there is anger, we know there is unity. And so in knowing all of this, we know that this power, this presence, this life is moving in and through and as us. We know that there is a goodness that is happening in the world right now. And we receive it and that we know that we are the vibration of it, giving it back out into the world. That as we accept it for ourselves, we accept it for this community, we accept it for our country, we accept it for the world. And so we send this good back out into the world knowing that there is peace, there is love, there is grace. And so we give thanks, knowing that this is true. We give thanks with a grateful heart for all of this. And together we affirm. And so it is. Blessings.
We hope you enjoyed today's podcast. If you happen to be in the Portland, Oregon area, we'd love to have you visit in person. The Portland Center for Spiritual Living is located at 6211 Northeast Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. Our inspirational service is at 11 a.m. every Sunday. We also have many programs, classes, and workshops developed just for our online audience. To find out more, go to our website at cslportland.org and look under the online tab. We have a variety of content dedicated specifically for our podcast listeners. Our mission is to open hearts, ignite minds, and make a difference. If you'd like to support our center and its podcasts, you can donate online at cslportland.org slash donate. Our website is also the place to learn more about what's going on at the center or to contact us. Allow us to become part of your extended spiritual community. Wherever you are in your spiritual journey, you are most welcome at the Center for Spiritual Living.